Okay, I wanted to make a quick video on my review of the Red Wing uh, Blacksmiths, not the, um, sorry, not the Iron Rangers, these are the Blacksmiths. Uh, I wasn't a big fan of the the toe piece and the hole out of the back went up. It kind of reminded me of Western and not a kind of a Western person. So basically, I like the look of this. I'm walking on concrete all day or anything hard. I rarely go on grass. I do sometimes, but mostly on concrete or anything hard that you probably should not be wearing these if you want to give them the longest life. Um, this, we're going to go three months now. And here is the tread, if you could see on the bottom. Treads actually at first I thought was wearing, but it just seemed to have worn down to a part where, if you can see that over here, it just seems to have worn, you know, where you walk and, you know, it leveled out. But I've been taking actually very good care of these shoes for the condition they're in. I use them for work, and that's not usually what you're supposed to do. And the guy, when I bought him at Red Wing, he wasn't like, oh, you're going to, that's not really what I want to see. But I'm like, well, that's what they're meant for. And this is the black Piera leather. So a little of the brown is showing through. But you guys got to keep in mind, I heavily oil these things. Like, heavily. Like, I'm always brushing them off every time I walk in and oil them. Uh, when I first got them. So this is three months and they're finally comfortable. They're finally comfortable. I will say, I wear orthotics. In a New Balance, I'm a size 13, uh, triple or quad E, usually a triple E, um, depending on the shoe style. Some of them may run a little narrow, so maybe a quad E, but a 13 double E. Um, Alan Edmond, I'm a 14 triple E or a 13 triple E or 4 E or whatever their biggest E is that they have in that I, I was able to fit in the 13. I chose, I think I went with the 14 because it just had a little bit more room. But I do have Allen Edmond, the Parker Avenue 13 or 14. I tried them both on. I think the 14 were a little bit better, even though. So these are a 13, no E. They're D with. And when I tried the 13 D with on the Iron Rangers, they were just way too tight i mean unless it was because the guy laced them up this guy when i was there i the guy was very honest or whatever but he laced them up so tight that they had these aren't the original laces i even just swapped out these laces a couple minutes ago so the story on the laces the laces that come with them on the blacksmith are flat do i actually have um they look like this these are laces. These are flat waxed laces. These are not from Red Wing, but that's what they look like. Maybe a little bit smaller. And when I laced them up on the Iron Rangers, not the Blacksmiths. These are the Blacksmiths. I tried on the Red Wing. They were, this guy, you know, to get them tied, my feet felt like they were, like, going to explode. Like, they were that tight. Like, unbearably. I wasn't even standing up yet. Guy's like, oh, well, that's how they're supposed to fit. I'm like, okay, I, I didn't know about this or whatever. Well, I knew I've done a lot of research, but I, it was just really tight. And I kind of have gout and uh, my feet are wide. And I just didn't know if I, for that kind of money, if I could withstand it. So I tried on the blacksmiths and they were just a bit looser. They were tight. But looser than the Iron Rangers. And I could deal with it. Now, he still laced them up with those laces. The flat. And they were short. And I could. I mean, when I got home, I could barely tie them. I needed them a bit on the looser side. And if you needed to tie them like they needed to be. To get them tied. If you get what I mean. That they even They were so short. I don't know why. But because they were, they were so short. Because you're supposed to really tighten these things down. So between the tightness of the shoe and the way they wanted me to tie them, I couldn't do that. So I had to wear the laces loose. And because of that, when I got to like the end here, where it was just right here, 
I there were just two little flaps here, and I was just like, I can't even do it. And then the guys, and when I first did that as a story, he's like, oh, dude, you're doing it all wrong. And this guy put my foot on his leg and he fucking, you know, and, I, and I'm like, you know, when I was there, I was doing it, whatever. I kind of like, whatever. And, you know, that's when I got home and I'm like, dude, I could like two, uh, three days went by or two days went by and I actually went back. I just threw out the laces. They gave me just standard laces. Hold on. These are the standard just laces you wear. I'm like, dude, I can't, I, I need, I cannot, these things take way too long to lace up and down. I mean, I just need your standard laces. And they just gave them to me and, you know, we even put them on and perfect, ready, set, go. I was back up and that's how I broke these in. The bro the breaking procedure on these shoes is, they say a month online, I'm going to tell you right now, two months, they're almost there, three months they're absolutely perfectly broken in. If you're feeling that they're a bit tight and when you first get them or they are tight when you get them, they will stretch. They take time and you just got to keep wearing them. I was having a problem right here. I now, I guess, have a bunion or something, but it has the bunion on this side went away. and well, Not went away, but it stopped flaring up as they stretch. And this one just kept going, but... I got a shoe stretcher and I stretched it, I think, twice. And even when I first got these things and I didn't have the shoe stretcher, I'm not going to lie. I put tubes in these things, uh, wheelbarrow tubes, brand new ones. I put a, uh, I tied the laces up tight. I left the nipple out and then I put a paint can in it and inflated them. And that stretched them, but... You would think doing all that for a couple of days or whatever, that would have made them like really loose. It didn't. It didn't. They were still a hard break and it was still, this is three months now. And I'm telling you right now, we're finally at the point where there's no pain. I can wear them. The shoes I went through the, before I was wearing boots, I actually just broke in a pair of like cheap Wrangler boots. I've had Red Wings and didn't require any break-ins, but these heritage i had like the red wing dynaster or whatever nice big boots you know but they're heavy and whatever they didn't require really any breaking you know they were just a little bit stiff out of the box but no hard feelings anything knees if you're not used to anything that is uh, one i'm going to tell you right now if you're on concrete all day and you're used to stepping on uh like shoes with insoles and stuff well you're in for a rude awakening to find out that I can't believe I can even walk on this and it's comfortable, but it is. Now, when I first walked, I was like, dude, you, you feel every time you tap or go down, it's like the impact goes into your foot and you're not used to that. And I wasn't. Every shoe I had had some sort of, I've always wore orthotics, but never had, um, you know, these are these shoes are just leather, uh, rubber and then leather. That's it. And I know when they get them resold, they put another piece of leather. But just realize the first thing I noticed when I was walking around in these things, if you don't like tapping around, like if you don't like being heard, don't buy these shoes. I'm telling you right now, everyone, as you're walking anywhere, you're, you're tapping. I'm fucking not joking. So if you don't like that, don't buy these. Um, That's the first thing. If you do not. If you cannot withstand the hardness going through your feet and you don't, you will get used to it. But if, if that's like you need that cushion, that's going to be a turn off as well. And I'm going to be honest, I wear orthotics and the first couple of days, I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. And I'm just like, you know what? Fuck it. I got orthotics that are used or like three years old. I got new ones now, but I, um, I actually peeled off and took the back of the orthotic because they were, you know, they're mold to your foot so the front part is just all cushion just a piece of cushion but the back part where you're basically um this is actually the orthotic right here right here to here that's how long it is in back i actually peeled the little piece off back here when they were brand new like a day after because i was like i don't know if i can do this and i just wanted to make sure now and i literally used the Whatever stuff that you put on the bottom, not shoe goo, but the stuff you put on on both sides and you wait for it to dry and then stick it on. I put them right in there. If you take these out, you'll see that this is that's the orthotic right there sticking out. 
hasn't done anything all good but that's not that was usually soft not soft anymore now i have my orthotic there and now the front the front half is just the leather and then the back half is my orthotic which is a combination of plastic and like hard foam and combination but i was like i don't know if i'm going to do this without it and i just didn't want to take the gamble i will say if you do wait it will not be that much of a problem if you want to give the shoes because what i noticed right away was where i put the orthotic it has like a little bit of a cup for your foot now these shoes, as the leather starts to move and break in, that may shift a little bit. And once these are glued in, that's it. So you can only push this so far back. And these may move out a little bit or do something. So you may want, if you can wait the three months without the orthotic, then put the orthotic in, great. I mean, but if you could give it a month, great. But if you can't, you're going to, you may feel a little bit of lip when you first put it in and you feel like you're not even on top of it. That's because you know where your foot's supposed to go in the shoe. But when you tie it up, it like pushes your whole foot back and you're sliding up a little bit on this, just a little bit. And you're not on it fully. So at first I was nervous. I was like, oh, did I screw this up? Unfortunately, it went away. Unfortunately, this all broke it. Now my foot goes down farther and it's fine now. Another thing. This is all stuff from me watching these reviews that I did not, that I'm, I'm just saying that it's not that they don't tell you, you don't really pay attention to it. Like I said, the first thing, not just a month, two to three months for a full break in. And I'm saying no pain. Like you don't have to feel like anything anymore. Like they're now you, they're now your shoes. Like one month was not enough. Two months. Okay. We're right there like on the verge of perfect three months you're set and it's only probably going to get better um so also the hard tapping the, not the tapping part tapping part i don't care but the concrete and stepping on this i kind of i now then listened on youtube a little bit more and they said oh well the wedge design is better for that because it has more cushion but then they said oh well the wedge design wears out really fast and then everyone also made the thing like, oh, well, these things just wear out really fast and you're going to resole them. And so I'm like, $300 or $350 for shoes. And I'm going to have to resole them in like a year or even less or people do them instantly. That's a lot of money. <laughs> like, so I'm glad to say that I'm probably going to get maybe two, two years out of these bottom soles. They look really good. And I'm going to be honest, I really like how they look. So I may do the same thing in the future. I may not even go with the extra piece of leather. I because I really like the low profile look. Anytime you add the the nubs and everything, you start standing. I like the low profile look. I really do. Um, that's what really got me about them. Um, what did I want to say? Okay. The second I got into these things, I started conditioning them. And they did get supple. They didn't get to this level, but they were supple. When you start conditioning them. Now, one thing that really helped, and I really do think it did help, I used mink oil, or um, I had the mink, I guess, the paste. And I, at first, when I first did them, I actually put like a very expensive, like, retardedly cream on them from Soafia. And I, I was like, that was the biggest waste ever because it was gone instantly. And it really, you know, when you're working these things, they instantly just. So I scratched that, and, it first, and then I was putting the Obanos on, and I'm just like, this is getting expensive. Scratch that. <laughs> because when you work in these things and you want to take care of them, you know, you're you're not just whacking. You wax them every, uh, like, week. But, you know, I, what I'm finding out for the best of these, because I don't – I like the brown coming through, but I really like the black. So that's why they're always looking black unless they get scuffed, and then when you re-wax them, the black, the black comes back. Um, I really like that black look. If you really didn't, if these would look – I would love to see the look, and maybe it would have been a completely different break in time if I would have left these unwaxed. It probably had to have been. But like I said, I've been – I've been working in these things for over three months, and this is what they look like. You see, there's no, you know, you see those, you get those pictures online with the brown marks. That's because, so now what I do is I watch a video online from Rose Anvil. Everyone knows this guy, and he cuts the boots in half. And in one of his videos, he was doing a boot at uh, Martin something. 
I don't know, when he was saying it was retardedly hard to break him in. And what he said was he had a I didn't I haven't been using the oil. I have the paste. Um, but I have the um what do I have? Um I'm losing it. So I have the paste of it and I've been putting it down on the outside of the mink oil. He what he did was he bought a thing of mink oil, like the actual it's like liquid. I have like the paste kind of stuff. It's like you rub it in and he literally just soaks these boots. And I was thinking about it. I'm like, when you open the inside of these, they're just raw leather like the other side. And then up here is like a little bit of cotton, but you could, there's not much there. And I'm like, hmm. So I didn't have any mink oil in the oil part. I had the paste. So I've been using it on the outside, but just, but twice I've, or three times I've done it now where I just take the open off liquid. I hold the shoe when it's not on me. I just hold it with the thing open and I just start pouring it like literally into the tongue. And then my goal is to get right up here and you'll feel it like, like not on this side, but you'll feel it inside. It's all wet and stuff. And you're like, Oh dude, you were you ruining your shoes. I'm like, dude, unfortunately you then wipe it all around. You make sure it's all soaked and then you do the other, the back part. And then you just leave them overnight and your shoes aren't even wet the next day. Your socks, they're not, you know, where you, you, every, I'm telling you, these things from the inside are like moist. And the next day you'll see these things and they'll just be from the, you could tell they're like glowing. And right now you could tell they're like, I've been working in them today. I haven't even buffed them, but they're not, they're not dry. Like they're, they're, they're supple. They're, you know, they're ready to withstand. And I'm going to be honest, I don't think this is said enough, but if you're going to work in these and you can, and if the inside's open, I think that's really, I'm trying to see, because I watched a lot of videos on the Iron Rangers and when they take them apart, they see that the inside something comes apart or whatever. I'm really, I mean, the person I probably send them to are probably not going to tell me, but I'm curious. I even put a little bit on the bottom. You know, it's all going to reject water and moisture. I'm not going to say maybe the adhesive that they're using is not the best. So maybe that's why it's failing and they have to redo that part. But I, I'm, 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 like I said, I'm not the one who's going to be taking them apart. So I, I don't know. I Maybe I could contact that guy, uh, the two brothers, and tell them. I just want to let you know I bought these shoes. I knew about you guys. I did all my research. And I have been, I've been working in these shoes, take very good care of them. I have been continually, every couple of weeks, maybe two weeks, I pour open off on the fucking side and, you know, smother them. And they've been holding up great, but now they need a resole. I know you guys said that, uh, that the insides, like, fall apart. Oh, and another thing I'm doing, uh, I'm also using shoe trees maybe every other day. Not every day I get lazy. I would say every other day. Um, and that just holds the shape of them a little bit. I bought them real cheap, like $10, $15 for an Allen Edmonds set made in the USA off eBay or something. And they're great. But um, So this is a review on the Blacksmiths. Love the shoes. Would I buy them again? Yes. Fortunately, I'm working in them. And the reason why is because I just wanted something with real leather that I can take care of. I know they're rebuildable. And the shoes I've been wearing before this, before even the Wrangler or when the, 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 not, oh, they were Wolverine. I'm sorry. They were very cheap Wolverine. They were like $180 Wolverines that I got on eBay. Brand new is a, you know, they're brand new on Black Friday for, with shipping, free shipping, and tax, it was $53. I got them. I actually oiled them. It took a little bit of a break in. Nothing like these. Nothing like these. These are these are something to break in. Those were much easier. Like they was worth like to start, but they still had cushion inside. The toe box was narrow on those. They were wide or double wide, but nothing like these are these are wide, but they're not. Those, like, came to a little bit of an ad like this, and then the back was, like, wide. You know, work shoe kind of stuff. And 
So that's where I'm coming from. Before this, I wore New Balance. Uh, they were great. And the only problem with the New Balances is they just don't hold up that long. They just, you know, they, uh, they were kind of plastic. And any of the leather ones, they just really, you know, I really didn't get into the leather ones, which were, were the ones I should have bought. But I really liked, like, the plastic kind of ones, the mesh. And eventually what just happened was um, they just got very dirty. And the inside just got unsupportive. Like, I, I don't know how else to explain it. They just, you know, I, I'm a bigger guy. I'm 300 pounds. So these shoes, you know, they're being put through the ringer. And those foam shoes just eventually just, they don't lose their, their rubber. But they lose the supportness. And you just start becoming, like... You're no longer, you see like the shoes are tilted a certain way from you walking and, you know, the foam just doesn't hold up. And eventually I just buy another pair of shoes and they weren't cheap. And the first pair I paid like $180, I think. And then the second pair I actually got used off of eBay, lightly used. I paid like 60 bucks and I used those and I still have them as like a shoe just to put on for two seconds. And they were great, but like I said, they're not... After a while, they just start getting raggedy and, oh, what was the thing? The thing on the side, because it's all mesh, on those, it would just get a hole right here. And then your whole foot would start showing on the side from rubbing, just rubbing up against stuff. And, well, what do you expect? It's a new balance. But, yeah, even, I was very impressed to see that, you see how much oil, you could see how much I put on these things. And I, my feet do not stink at all. And uh, I'm not going to, I was, in the last shoe, I was definitely a foot sweat. It definitely made my foot sweat. This one, no. I have on, um, these are Wrangler socks, just cheap athletic socks that are size 13. And I'm like a 14, 15. These are like meant to go up to a 12. So they're always small. But I hate the size 15 socks. They go up to like here. And I'm just like... Are you kidding me, right? So I guess you could say these are thin socks, but I, you see how they did this right here? Not a lot of people go over this. See how it's like this machine did this. So what this means is, is the wor the lettering, the numbers in here, all of this is permanent. There's no matter, nothing you can do because it's like a machine that goes up and down and it stitches it so that that's actual stitching right there. Not into the boot, but not into here. But it's a label that's like, I don't know how to explain it. So the only way for this to disappear is for the red dye to come out and this all to be one piece. And still you would see the embroidering of it. But this is different thread there. That's how they did it. So this like goes up and down, up and down, up and down. So I thought that was pretty cool because in like 70, not 70. But in like 20 years, you're like, if you still had them, you could see the code and everything about them. Because usually the first thing that wears out on all of these shoes, when you use them, on any shoe is the label. It really does. It's hard. Some shoe companies will stamp it into the side of the leather. Not on this side, but the inside. And I guarantee you that stays. That ain't coming out. But um, usually these kind of shoes, they usually just put like a tag or whatever and they don't stay they usually like on my wrangler they put the tongue thing up but that's gone you know they just make it i guess you know there's a, some they they want to know that there's pride and another thing when i clean these things before i come in the house the welt i'll use the blow gun and i'll just hold it over it you know the welt so just to clean it all out but i i really like that look at how everything's wearing and everything like that I mean, here's the deal. If you send this, these to a cheap cobbler, expect cheap results. That's all I'm going to say. The most, You spend a little bit more money, you'll send it to someone that has some experience. And they won't have to re-do this whole thing on the in, onto the shoe if, you know, they're experienced. I mean, you know, because I, I hate to send this to someone and they're just like, oh, dude, this whole fucking thing is ruined. I'm like... I don't see it ruined. It's not ruined. The holes are still there. Still got one more resole on this until you got to rip it off and put another one on. You know, this it's still, you know, there's still holes there. So, you know, you got to be, I hate to have people tell you something that's absolutely not true. But um, because you worked in them, because, you know, they're used to getting like shoes that, 
Oh, I just walked to the park and back and I got a scuff. That's fucking cool. No, no. I'm working in my shoes. I'm I, I'm working. <laughs> there's, there's not, there is, we are welding. We are soldering. We are wrenching. We are kicking. We are whatever it needs to be done. I have held these, I've held tires in between these things, wrenching with tires and all sorts of shit. We are working. So, this is my black, uh, I want to say Black Ranger. It, these are the Red Wing Blacksmiths in the Black Piera. Very happy I got them. I'm, you know, I, I, people would look at these and be like, dude, you destroyed them. You destroyed them. And I don't think so. I really don't because this is what they're meant for. They're meant to be used. They're meant to be worked with. The black, I just think it, it just, you know, what I was founding with brown shoes, and I would I would definitely, my next shoe, or maybe something a brown, I don't know. But usually what happens with the brown, what I found, is on, like, the sides here, you know, you'll rub something, and then the black just, like, dyes it. And then, like, no matter what you do, I'm not saying I'm trying to clean it, but, like, your brown shoe that now you're trying to, get like, patina or whatever. Like, if this had black marks on it, you couldn't see. If anything, it helps it because we're trying to hide whatever. That's what I. That's why when I saw the blacks, I was like, perfect. I want the blacks. I'll be able to take care of them. And as they're used, you know, anything that gets rubbed on them that's black could die them permanently you get what i mean it's just is it's unreversible and i and once that kind of happens i'm not gonna say it would be ugly i would love to try it but like a lighter like that um the the like the newer shoes that i see that that color in the the mock toe with that like lighter brown i don't know i'm just afraid that you start working in them and what i'm doing like I'm gonna put my foot on the side of the ground. You see this stuff on the side of this, this floor, and on my other shoes, those Wrangler shoes, you, you kind of like stain them a little bit. Really, not they're work shoes that you know at that point, and the black ones are just more forgivable when you're in dirtier environments. I'll just say it like that. Um, and at first, I'm gonna be honest. If you constantly wax these things, I barely see brown. This is the first parting of brown I'm really seeing. I'm going to be very honest. But if you want that coloring, maybe try to do a little bit less on the back because it really doesn't need it and just keep staying up here. But I just, I really wanted the black pair of shoes. I just think they look and they have that that straight thing. I didn't like that on the Iron Ranger. You know, you watch so many videos and it just makes you want to buy them. You're like, oh, now I got to have a pair of Iron Rangers. But I was just like... I'm just like, I really don't like, it kind of just reminds me of like Texas and I'm from New York and I don't like that like cowboy look. I really don't. I wish this had a pull tab in the back every day. I've tried to find a new way to put these on so I don't have, you know, so, um, but a little pull tab, it does look cool without it, but I would really wish that maybe it had something because, you know, this this is like, you know, it's like a U right here. So you have to like kind of get your foot in. So my kind of way is put your foot as far as you can in. Push down on the shoe on this part of it. And then use your finger and get it around there with the laces. I've gotten as far as just using like one and one here. Oh, that was the other thing. Not to keep going off. So these eyelets. I don't know what the fuck the deal is with them. They start, especially the, the other laces, like these laces are pretty good. But the ones that they gave me from Red Wing, not the first ones, the second ones, because they're not, I guess, meant for this shoe. They were a bit too big, especially when I first got them. And they like closed up a touch. You see that? And I don't know why. I don't know it's because I'm tightening them and... I don't know why. I'm not really a big... They look cool. The eyelets need to be stronger. They need to be stronger. They keep pulling down. And I don't want to keep fighting them back because I'm, I'm afraid I'm just going to, you know, have to replace them and have them, you know, get a new set. And I really don't want to have to do that. So I'll actually... If it won't let me... If I'm untying them and it won't let me go anymore, 
I just leave it. Usually one comes off and that's just enough, but you can, you can see on that side. I didn't do that and I haven't hit anything into it. It seems to just happen when you're tightening your shoes and I don't know why. No one has ever talked about that. So I don't know why. I don't know what I'm doing, but you can see it's on both sides. And that's usually the first. So what I'll do is, is when I tighten these things, so I'm not like grilling on these, I'll go outwards with the shoelaces. So I've not put any tension on these, tighten this down and then go in and then tighten and then do it again. Oh, if you're wondering about my spark plugs, I custom made those. Very hard to do actually. It, it seems like such a simple thing, but to put this eyelet, which is a washer, on that, on both of them, hold on, on there, that was a ton of work. That was like two to three hours of my life. I will not get back. I'm sitting there with the with the welder, with the with the mig, uh, with the TIG gun. You had to have it. Um, one, you cannot do it with the ones that have the unscrew on the cap. It has to be solid metal. You hold it there with the washer and this thing sitting there in the um, the clamp. And you just got to touch it just right. If you get it wrong, guess what? You burn the spark plug. <laughs> this, the or, no, I'm sorry, not the spark plug. The, uh, the thin washer just blows up. So even with like 0.5 of an amp, it's where the arc starts. And if, if it starts on the washer, done. <laughs> it has to start on the spark plug. And then you put the spark plug on it, the, the washer, and while you're doing that, you really need to add filler metal because if the arc hits it without the filler metal, it melts the washer. <laughs> the washer always melts. The washer acts as if it's filler metal. So you have to have like filler metal and that like standing there waiting as you're going into the arc and you're holding all of this and you're trying to get a ground. And I tried doing it on the bottom. You can't. Uh, I You can't do it on the point. So I just use this lip out after doing the tops i was like i'm freaking done i ain't doing anything with the bottoms that's how it is i am just i've had enough like that was enough time that i spent on them they'll never i don't <laughs> never be made one's an ngk vintage one's a bosch off of a motor of somewhat i don't know but i tried to do different ones and like i said it just took way too much time and oh my god it was just a lot. And, then, and then you sit here and ground it and just just a pain in the ass. So, here's a review on the Red Wing Blacksmiths for you.